With the rise in popularity of rugby league due to the introduction and success of both the male and female game, it seems fitting that this resource revolves around a specialised movement skill in this field. Rugby League provides multiple opportunities for participation in schools for a variety of ages. The Play NRL program for primary schools and the introduction of Rugby League as a branch of the sport and recreation syllabus illustrates the link between sport and education. The achievement standards set by the Australian curriculum for Year 7 and 8 HBE can be seen below with the most relevant points for this exercise being highlighted. Also seen below are the relevant content descriptors for this skill. The remainder of this video will focus around the specialised movement skill of the front-on tackle in rugby league. The selected performer was Sophie, a 14-year-old female student. Davis notes that tackling is classified as a gross motor movement. This is as the tackle involves large muscle movements and include the use of many fundamental movement patterns. The skill can be split into three specific phases. The first phase of performing a front on tackle addresses stance. The beginning stance of a tackle involves the defender standing with their knees bent, feet shoulder width apart and the straight alignment of their back as well as their head and eyes up and facing forward. Once this is achieved, the approach can begin. To aptly complete a tackle, the distance between the defending and attacking player is approximately 3 metres or 2 large steps. Once this distance has been closed, the second phase of the tackle begins. Phase 2. Establishing contact with the attacker. As this phase is paramount to the safety of players, when teaching a lesson on tackling, this should be heavily focused upon. Establishing the safe side to tackle entails determining which shoulder is used for making contact. The aim of every tackle is to have the defender's head on the outside of the attacker's body, thus preventing injury to the defender's head or upper body. Step two of this phase involves the defender bending at the knee while both cementing their front foot and transferring their weight onto the ball of their back foot. This allows a transfer of power through the knees when they straighten upon contact. Lastly, contact is made. This is completed by the defender adjusting their shoulder into the attacker's body. The final phase of executing a safe and effective tackle is the finishing the tackle phase. It's important to stress to players that the tackle is not complete until the ball carrier meets the ground. The steps that are required to complete a tackle include squeezing the arms, preferably just above the attacker's knees, pulling them into your body. This puts them off balance and makes them easier to take to the ground. It is also very important to communicate to the students that they must continue driving with their legs as the ball carrier falls to the ground. The following video is of a safe and effective tackle slowed down. Recorded below is the video of Sophie's first attempt at a front on tackle. Pictured below are still shots of Sophie's first tackle. The identified weaknesses can be linked to her lack of experience when completing a tackle. In this skill area, Sophie is in the cognitive stage of learning. As such, Brown remarks that learning experiences should be catered to developing concept understanding. As Sophie is highly coordinated due to previous experience with a myriad of sports, this will assist her in aptly completing the skill. Scholars Nicole, McFarlane and Dick state that the assessment of strengths and weaknesses is a useful tool for giving feedback when it is followed by corrective comments. Focused feedback motivates students to succeed in achieving their learning goals. By having a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Sophie, her strengths and weaknesses upon conducting the tackle were clearly communicated. This allowed her to have a thorough understanding on what the corrective drills would assess. All right, now we're just going to take a second to identify your strengths and weaknesses from your first tackle. So to start off on a positive note, uh, your point of contact when making the tackle was correct. You were below the chest and above the knee, which is the ideal range when making a tackle. You also attempted to wrap your arms, which was really well. Most beginners don't do this. They think you can just hit, but you need to hit and stick and squeeze the back of the leg. So you did that really well. And with your approach, you had the right distance. So we're aiming about two to four steps. 
away from the attacking player when we're going in to make a tackle to maximize the power that you get through your legs. On the other hand, there's some things to work on. So when we're approaching in a tackle, we need to have our hands up like this. This just brings our body in line and allows us to use our shoulders to drive force through the opposite, opposite player. Um, when you went to actually perform the tackle, you got your head on the wrong side. That's a matter of experience, so we're gonna work on that later on through some drills. It's just identifying if the ball runner is coming on this side of you, you use your right shoulder, so your head is on the outside of their body, because when your head's on the inside, it leads to injury. So a lot of people get concussions because you make contact with the hip with your head instead of having your head on the outside. Finally, even though you did get the approach distance correct when going in to make the tackle, you did the steps the wrong way. So when we're going in to make a tackle, we need to go two big steps and a little step to maximize the power. You went two little steps and a big step. So that just makes it awkward and you don't get as much power. So we're gonna go work through that. When planning learning experiences around correcting Sophie's identified weaknesses, many factors were considered. Elements that included types of feedback given, how it was communicated, the drills that were used and how they were explained and conducted to ensure progression. As such, the progressive part practice method was used to ensure each stage of the skill was correctly learnt. Brown reiterates this, noting that PPP is useful for novices of a skill. The following content focuses upon Sophie practicing her weaknesses in separate drills before piecing them together to perform a safe and well executed tackle. Keeping your head upwards when moving into a tackle is a vital skill ensuring that the defender both keeps their eyes on the attacker and lowers the risk of placing their head in an unsafe position. A golf ball was placed under Sophie's chin, removing the temptation to drop her head when approaching the tackle by limiting the range of motion she could move with her head. For safety, this drill was only performed at half pace, focusing on developing a sound tackle technique. You can't see the golf ball. As noted earlier, feedback at this stage is paramount. Brown reiterates this, noting that feedback is most effective when incorporating both visual and verbal information. The following video displays these elements of visual demonstrations with verbal information in practice. Now we're gonna work on your last two weaknesses, which we talked about before. One of those weaknesses were having your hands up. Can you explain to me why you think having your hands up is important when making a tackle? Because it's easy and faster to wrap the person. Yep, so that's a good point. It is easier and it is faster to try to wrap the opposing tackler when you've got your hands here rather than there. But the main thing, it allows you to be more mobile through your shoulders. So if you, as the attacker, were to walk at me and change direction late, I'm able by having my hands up to move the top half of my body to make a safe and effective tackle because I'm still having my head on the outside. If you have your hands here, you're more likely just to try to do that. You see how my head goes that way? That could lead to me getting kneed or even worse, having the hip bone of the opposition plate into my head. So your second weakness, it was, I believe, Closing the distance, you did that right, but in your approach, you did two small steps and then a big step. Can you explain to me why you think that's wrong now? Um, because it didn't let you go fast enough. Yep, so the reason we have two big steps first and then a small step is to close the distance. So by taking one big step, two big steps, I'm now close enough to get into position. The final smallest step is here. You nearly want to be standing on your opposition's toes the reason behind this is when you drop, it creates more power through the shorter base in your legs. So now that I'm in my position, I've dropped, I've got my head on the outside, my hands are still up, I'm wrapping, and I've made an effective and safe tackle. So now what I want you to do, I want you to work on your approach to me. You're gonna have your hands up, you're gonna use your two big steps and your little steps, and you're gonna perform a safe tackle with your head on the outside of my body. So let's go, hands up, one, Two, three, drop, oh, great. A progression on the previous drill, the aim of the next activity was to replicate an open environment. 
Sophie, as the defender, needed to put together the elements already learnt and place herself in a safe position when attempting a tackle. By responding to the movements of the attacker, Brown further notes that a key identifier of progression from a cognitive learner to an associative one is the ability to respond to environmental factors. The final video is of Sophie performing a safe and effective tackle in a closed environment and highlights her progression from the first tackle. It is seen that Sophie keeps her head and hands upward when approaching the tackle. She places her head in a safe position, makes contact with her shoulder, wraps and then squeezes her arm around the attacker before driving them into the ground. The result? A textbook execution of a front-on tackle.